The Raptors have now won back-to-back -back contests as they welcome in the broken down New York Knicks. And not just the on-court New York Knicks. Everything to do with the New York Knicks are in shambles right now. Whether it's COVID protocol, whether it's actual injuries. They're having a tough time in New York right now. The Raptors lay a full-on beat down on the squad as they come to Scotiabank Arena this afternoon. 120 to 105. Now, that was even a lot closer than it was for the majority of this contest. With the W, the Raptors have won back-to-back -back games, as I mentioned earlier, and are now 16-17 and 17 on the year, one game back of 500. And assuming the Celtics beat the Orlando Magic tonight, the Raptors are sitting in the 10th spot in the Eastern Conference. That's kind of wild, but they're, just, they're still hanging around here. And it's so nice to watch the Raptors at full health because you're finally seeing what these guys are capable of. Now, before I go any further, though, I understand the Knicks didn't have some key guys. No D. Rose, no Julius Randle, no Mitchell Robinson. Obviously, Kemba Walker's dealing with a sore knee. There's some other, there might have been one or two other guys that I missed. But So those, those are some really key guys for their team that they did not have. So what do the Raptors have to do? They have to welcome in the Knicks and lay a beat down on them. And they did. Right from the get-go, the Raptors dominated play. They dominated pace, possession, the glass whatever they just dominated and it all started with pascal siakam and his facilitating early in this basketball game in the first quarter look rappers only won the first quarter 30 to 27 but at one point they were like up 11 they were dominating the quarter and you're only up by three after one quarter of play we go into the second quarter and the rappers continue that pace and defensively they tighten up hard and they win that second quarter 26 18 and the raptors are up by what is that 11 i believe 11 at halftime so you're in a great spot you got a double digit lead at the break you're feeling good pascal's moving the ball around like it's a thanksgiving turkey or i guess a christmas turkey or whatever you want to call it then and, and Fred Van Vliet's having a great game. OG had a great first half. Scotty hasn't quite imposed himself yet, but it's so nice to see him back on the floor for the Raps. And in the, sec in the second half, right, that third quarter is always so crucial in the sense of uh, more or less the first five minutes. How about that in the third quarter? Because you never know how a team is going to come out of the break. The Raptors, <laughs> they came out of the break guns a blazing. And a big credit to that is Fred Van Vliet. He ended up with, the team ended up with 40. In the third quarter, they allowed 29. And you guys can do the math. They're up, I mean, I say that being one of the guys who can't do math. They were up by 22 at the end of three quarters of play. They scored 40 in the quarter. Fred Van Vliet had 19 alone in that third quarter. He was on fire. I think he made five threes in the quarter and they decided to go underneath screens. Not really sure why that's the case with the Knicks because every time, you know, quite a few times in that quarter, Fred Van Vliet coming off that screen uh, by the three-point line. Their guy gets caught up or he tries to go underneath. What does Fred do? He just pulls him and takes a three. It's wide open and he drilled five of them in the quarter. They just didn't learn. And in the fourth quarter, it's closing time, right? You want to try and limit the minutes when your team is blowing out a team. So you want to try and get these hard minutes from your bench guys, your Justin Champagne's, your, you know, uh, Chris Boucher's, Precious Chewis. You want to get these minutes into those guys. So guys like Fred and OG and Scotty, guys who are just coming back from this COVID thing, even Pascal, you want to be able to rest these guys a bit here. And they had the opportunity to. Because those guys, guys like Justin Champagne and whatnot, they found a way to hold the four. It did get down to 15, but you hung on to win. You lose the fourth quarter 31-24, but it doesn't matter. Because for the majority of the second half, you're up by 20 plus. That's how I, I when I said off the top of this team dominated right from the get-go. As I mentioned, at halftime, they were up 11. And in the three, are up by 22, and it felt like they, were not, I mean, they weren't up by less than 20 ever. It just felt like that through the, uh, through the entirety of this game. Now, let's get to some player stats. Let's get to the, the, the individuals. OG had a great first half. Ended up with 14 points, three boards, one dime on 4 of 11 shooting, 5 of 5 from the line, 1 of 5 from 3. Did have three steals in the game. I believe, if I could be wrong, didn't that mean he has seven steals in the last two games since coming back? I could be wrong. I could be, I, somebody had four steals in the last game. It might have been OG. 
However, in the second half, OG didn't give me much offensively. You know, he really struggled. I think all 14 happened in the early goings of this game. And it makes sense, right? Guy just coming off the COVID IL, or COVID IL, the uh, COVID protocol list, whatever the heck you want to call it. So it's going to take some time to get his feet underneath him. And, you know, he had the great first half because you're raring to go. But then once that second half kicks in, you're running out of gas. And you saw that from OG today. But Fred Van Vliet, you definitely didn't see that from this guy. As the game went along, he got better. 35, 5, and 5 for Fred Van Vliet. It's ludicrous stuff. Shot 11 of 17 from the field. 6 of 6 from the line. 7 of 13 from three-point range. Fred Van Vliet was on fire tonight. And it's kind of wild, you know, Raptor fans. That this guy is averaging over 20 a game. He's averaging over six boards a game. And he's averaging like five or six assists a game. Or maybe I'm wrong with the rebounds and assists. But it's something similar. It's wild the year that Fred Van Vliet is having. And it's not really being talked about. It's pretty remarkable stuff for Freddie V. Now, Pascal Siakam. Back-to-back contest with a double-double. Today, he looked like he was forcing his offense a little bit later in the game and turning the ball over quite a bit. But other than those two things, he had a great game. 20 points, 14 rebounds, 7 dimes. As I mentioned earlier, the, the facilitating from Pascal, at least in the first two games back, he has been outstanding. 7 dimes in the game, you know, he had the double-double, 7 of 15 shooting, 6 of 9 from the free throw line, had 2 steals in the game, but did turn the ball over like 5 or 6 times. So, and, and that, that's the thing about being a number 1 option. People can argue, well, he's not a number 1, he's a number 1. On this team, him and Fred interchange that number 1 option, right? So teams are going to double him, right? And you saw the New York Knicks do that quite often in this basketball game. They were doubling Pascal quite a bit. So what does he do? Yeah, yeah, he turned the ball over a few times, and that's when that's when that, that's the Pascal that is trying to force things, right? But early in the basketball game, he wasn't doing that. Moving the ball around, sharing the rock. He had like five or six assists in the first half. He was dialed in early moving the basketball, and that's why the Raptors got that double-digit lead at the half. So a heck of a game for Pascal. Just a turnover thing. That's the one thing to keep an eye on for him moving forward. But other than that, he had a, he had a fantastic game. Scotty Barnes, first game back for him, so didn't expect him to go too crazy. He did have 13 points, four boards on 4-9 shooting, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, 2 of 5 from three-point range. Had a steal and a block in the game. By the way, Pascal did have two steals as well. And for Scotty Barnes, look, it's about just getting your feet wet again for him. And you saw in that, was it the third quarter, I believe? Where he hit, we hit the one three, we got the stop, he comes down, takes another three, and knocks down the back-to-back -back threes, and he gets jacked up. You know Scotty's back when he's starting to feel it there. Great job for Scotty Barnes in this one. And Chris Boucher, off the bench. Now, I, albeit some of that's probably in garbage time at the end, but he made it happen. 12 points, 4 boards, 4-7 four shooting, 4-4 four four from the line, 2 steals, 2 blocks for Chris Boucher off the bench. Look, if you can get a guy in double figures off the bench, you're laughing. And you had that tonight. Your starting unit, they did their job. Gary Trent Jr. had a very weird game. Struggled shooting the ball a little bit, got into foul trouble, ended up fouling out in the game. And uh, it was kind of, a, I wouldn't say a liability, but he just wasn't able to stay out there. And it was a really weird game for Gary Trent Jr. Now, let's get into the team stats. The New York Knicks shot 45% from the field, 33% from, th uh, from three-point range, and 82% from the free throw line, which aren't terrible numbers. The Raptors shot 48% from the field, 38% uh, from three-point range, and 83% from the free throw line. So really not a massive discrepancy considering you won by 15 and you dominated the majority of this game. But again, as we've talked about, we talked about it in the last video, it's the glass. It's activity on the glass, getting second chance opportunities. That's what this team has been great at, at least in the last couple of games. They're plus 14 on the glass. It helps when they, it helps when Zubac is not, the, Zubac is not in the lineup for the Clippers and no Mitchell Robinson for the Knicks today. So it kind of helps when that's the case. That allows Pascal to grab 14 boards. He had 19 in the last game. So I understand that. We also had four, plus four in the offensive boards category. And, you know, uh, then you had, what, we're plus 16 in points in the paint, so you dominated down there. That's credits to guys like Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes doing their thing uh, down low in the paint. Great job from those guys. Now, something I wanted to bring up. The turnovers category was 17-16. 
They had 17. We had 16 turnovers. First off, the 16 turnovers is way too much. And as I mentioned earlier, Pascal Siakam having quite a few himself. So got to clean that stuff up. However, off of those 17 turnovers that they had, that they, they had we had 27 points off of those turnovers. Our 16, they only scored 18. You made them pay for their mistakes where they didn't, well, they definitely didn't match it. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, the Raptors were also plus 12 in the fast break. That could be also points off a of turnover. kind of, you know, coincides with each other. But in the end, the Raptors just, this game seemed never in any, any question, never any doubt that the Raptors were going to win this basketball game. Even at halftime, they're up double digits. They're feeling good. OG's in double figures. Spicy P's moving the ball around. Fred's in double figures. You just had that feeling, that great feeling. They come out in the third and, oh, and they accentuate it? Something like that. Either way, guys, the Raptors win back-to-back -back games for a game under 500. And they take on the San Antonio Spurs on Tuesday night to 7 o'clock tip-off at Scotiabank Arena. The Raptors are going to get back to 500, going for a 17-17 record. Wouldn't that be nice? Come back from all this COVID protocol nonsense. You win three straight and you end up being 500. Be a great start to uh, 2022 for the Toronto Raptors, right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game this afternoon, smack the like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys are not already comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game today for the Toronto Raptors? The Twitter link is down below. So follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. The Instagram link is down below as well. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition. It's supposed to be Monday, but I guess it's Wednesday as they host the Edmonton Oilers at Scotiabank Arena. 7 o'clock puck drop there between the Leafs and Oilers because we don't know if we can even face American teams here or there for that matter. Actually, I think we can go there. They just can't come here. I don't know what the heck the deal is there. For the Toronto Raptors, however, their next game is on Tuesday night as we talked about as they take on the San Antonio Spurs at Scotiabank Arena. 7 o'clock tip off there as Raptors are going to get back to 500 for the first time in a while. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.